So there's been a lot of vocal debate about the state of India's social welfare structure. There are reports that talk about a 40% leakage rate. There are economists like Dr. Abhijit Banerjee who advocate for universal basic income and all to solve this. So what I wanted to ask was, what does Tamil Nadu social welfare structure, which for decades has been predicated on the free, dis free distribution of domestic appliances, how is that any substantially different from the status quo? Is a UBI something that the Tamil Nadu government is considering uh, with, you know, Esther Duflo, the Nobel laureate, sitting on the economic advisory council? Is this something you're considering? If not, why? No, listen, I think uh, the free delivery of appliances and all is relatively recent. So I wouldn't go into that as the benchmark, right? Free delivery of education or food or laptops or cycles or, uh, you know, other things is a more stable across governments, across decades phenomenon of, of Tamil Nadu. That's a debate, right? Uh, and I'll separate this debate into two components. The component that's being argued on TV and in uh, political debates today is just noise. It's irrelevant, right? The same prime minister who argued against all kinds of freebie culture is parked in Gujarat, handing out freebies every day after having the EC delay the uh, election announcement for 40 days so he can give out more freebies before the election comes. So the political debate is worthless. It's not, it's not, you know, meaningful, thoughtful people should not get engaged in the nonsense debate. The true debate is how do we separate uh, or how do we optimize a couple of variables. First variable, Capital spending versus revenue spending, right? In theory, like building roads and ports and bridges and water systems and airports and hospitals is going to have a bigger multiplier effect than just giving cash to people, right? In theory, at least economic theory. And the second is, if you decide to give cash to people, how should you get it to them? Which is better? So, for example, uh, at least some of you are on an aided program in this college, right? What does aided mean? Aided means the government of Tamil Nadu chooses to pay some amount of money to this college for the uh, salaries of certain teachers to teach and therefore it makes the tuition cost for you uh, cheaper. But this is not the only model in the world. If you look in other parts of the world, they don't pay the college, they pay the students. They pay the students the fees to go and then let the students choose which college to go with that. So, if you, once you decide it's going to be money, how should that money be spent? What is the optimal channel that gives the greatest result and the best kind of leverage and multiplier is a separate debate. And then how much should you do capital expenditure versus revenue like cash payments is a separate debate. In practice, actually, in many of these places, the debate is interesting in theory. But in practice, we are limited by the execution capability of the government. We are limited by the lack of data, by the uh, ability to actually deliver to the last mile with clarity. These are the bottlenecks. And these, I think the good news is there's huge amounts of um, improvement possible. For example, right now, and, and I was in some seminar recently and um, somebody referred something, 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 came back to a profound statement that the famous economist John Maynard Keynes had made in the depth of the Second World War when they had asked how will we afford to rebuild or how will we afford, you know, where will the money come to do X, Y or Z? And he said, Anything we can actually do, we can afford, right? It's not, usually it's not primarily about the money. Can you actually do what you say you're going to do? So for example, if I allocate 10,000 crores more this year for building roads, do I actually have the execution capability to build that many more roads? And the machine required, do I have that many engineers? Do I have that, that good contractors? Can I actually get the materials? Can I get the sand? These are the more profound questions. And the answer to most of these questions is, it's not the money, it's the execution capability. So, at the end of the day, I would say at least today, uh, most states and the country are limited by execution capability, not by money. So, if we could execute better, we would get better leverage, better mileage, better. But when we cannot, 
we are capped idhukku mele ennala selavu panna mudiyadhu even if i want to do i can't do more projects than x right i just don't have the capacity to execute on the revenue side if i could get clarity on where the money is going if i could guarantee that the money reaches the people i wanted to reach for the reason i wanted to reach them meaning are they eligible beneficiaries then again i think we'd get a huge multiplier effect almost as good as putting into capital expenditures right what happened last year we came to power my chief minister had made a commitment that we'd give 4000 rupees per ration card you remember that last time we came 2 crore something ration cards cost us 9000 crores right in a year that the revenues were falling off a cliff because there was second wave we shut down there was third wave we did partial shut down the rains came so badly you couldn't have any economic activity for like a month so idalla meeri we gave 9000 crores it turned out was one of the best things we did of course there was a lot of malfeasance of course there were a lot of cards that shouldn't have been getting it we found lakhs of card holders who had never bought a product from a ration shop before never bought a product from a ration shop after but came and collected the 4000 rupees twice right no not not once 2000 2000 they came twice so there was clear leakage but at the end of the day in the middle of a crisis we were able to stimulate demand by putting that much liquidity into the market and that has helped us a lot if you see our rebound this year first of all our, our economy didn't go into recession last year the overall indian economy shrank in real terms tamil nadu was up like 1.6 or 1.8 percent didn't shrink uh the the 2021 i'm saying and this year 22 23 our rebound has been much faster than the indian average because there's been enough liquidity moving around the system so it's not about welfare or not welfare it's about targeted welfare in the right schemes to the right people will give you much better results than generally doling out money it's about capital expenditures if done efficiently will give you high multiplier effects or if wasted is just like putting money into the ground right so a lot of it comes down to that if you, you know if i learned one thing in government it's exactly what keynes figured out 80 years ago in 1942 anything we can actually do as we intend to do we can afford to do so it's not a like limitation of money that goes into this right?